So welcome uh, to another version of Chief Rounds where we highlight one of the great papers in, in the Division of Humanc at Mass General. Today I have with me uh, Dr. Jonathan Wettstein who is in the Center for Cancer Research. We're going to go deep today. He's a basic scientist. Um, but he recently had a paper uh, that was honored by an editorial in Cell. Uh, KDM4A lysine dimethylase induces site-specific copy gain, re-replication of regions amplified in tumors. So welcome, Jonathan, and uh, so tell us a little bit about this paper and how you got it started and what okay. you did in the experiment. Um, so um, we had first started out by um, investigating how the enzyme is actually modulating the genome's organization. So this enzyme doesn't play classic roles in gene expression or regulation. People have tried to implicate it there. Mm -hmm. But what we found as we looked across a number of cell types and cancer cell types is that it seems to be playing a bigger role and how the genome is copying or replicating itself. So a couple years ago we published a paper demonstrating that it's modulating how the genome is organized and the timing by which the DNA is replicated. So we were really curious based on that and the fact that some other papers had implicated it in the genome stability um, because it's in DNA damage response pathways. We were very interested in if you got increased levels, if it caused massive disruption of the genome. So we did a lot of analysis, like Sky, and a variety of approaches to see if we did see this, and we never saw it. And so uh, through a number of interrogations and looking, we actually identified that regions that this protein is enriched to, based on cytogenetic analysis, we found that it was regulating distinct regions of the genomes, copy gain. Um, so what this did, and why this is important, is it demonstrates that there's an enzyme um, or potentially enzymes capable of regulating site-specific copy gains. So up till now, the idea in cancer and disease is that there's random selection, mm -hmm. selective pressure, therefore you get gains. This demonstrates that that is not potentially totally the case, that in fact there are enzymes that have the capacity to drive unique regions. Where is this important? Well, the regions we found gained, site-specifically, they have been found in resistant models for ovarian cancer, resistant models for multimyeloma. They're highly frequent in patients with autism, schizophrenia. So there's these direct pathological links to these focally gained regions in diseases and drug resistance. So the idea was that you would have random selection and these regions emerge. What we might propose based on this data is that chromatin modulators themselves can actually regulate copy events. So if you're regulating copy events, it's actually the enzyme that's doing it. So now you actually have identified a face with a process. So now you have something that's targetable. So to take a step back, so you have these, um, you have this DNA yep. that is packaged yep. uh, in this chromatin, yep. uh, this complex collection of nucleic acids and proteins. It's proteins just a mixture. Nucleic, right? yep. And you have these histone demethylases yep. that are coming in and unsilencing essentially certain yep. specific areas. Yep. Now classically in cancer, we think of, of uh, DNA getting methylated and, and silenced, but you're actually saying the opposite. That is, areas, um, areas of DNA that are amplified that we see all the time in cancer actually are happening by these site-specific enzymatic reactions opening up just little tiny windows yes. in the DNA. Exactly. And then the stuff just getting revved up and, and how out. and the best part is it's you're opening the region but these enzymes have the ability to associate with proteins that can cause the event so this protein when you purify it and we did mass spec to purify complexes a major set of associated proteins are involved in re-replication and copy gain so what happens is the enzyme not only is creating openness in certain regions but it's also facilitating recruitment of necessary factors to facilitate this event so, so copy number variation is really, it, it, it's all about the epigenetics. It's all about the stuff, or well, at least in this example. In this example, so what we also did is we collaborated with David Alice's lab, um, and we took reagents where you can introduce a histone with a lysine mutation, and that mutation will in turn knock out that methylation state throughout the entire chromatin. We did that, and we were able to demonstrate that the two sites of, that are the substrates for this enzyme they physically, by themselves, if you introduce them in, the, in cells, 
they can cause the same gains. They can facilitate it. So what this demonstrates is that the physical substrates, the histones, mm -hmm. the chromatin itself, is able to propagate the event. So this is not requiring the enzyme. So what this means is that any enzyme or pathway that could talk to that chromatin state in those regions could facilitate gains of these regions. So by, instead of targeting the specific protein that is yep. the product of this amplification, you could take a step back and target the actual process that yes. is generating this from the beginning. Yes, and then what, how we kind of demonstrate the possibility of this is when you put in the methylation, mm -hmm. the enzyme that puts the methyl sites on, if you put it in with the enzyme, they com completely balance each other. So you block gains. If you put in the enzyme that actually binds on top, so the methyl serves as like a docking site, and when that reader, uh, the, his, the heterochromatin protein binds, that pr technically protects it from demethylation. If you now put that in an excess, it is able to once again block the enzyme from causing the phenotype. Right. So it says that you can actually create stasis, you can actually balance this occurring event. So it does open the possibility of drug ability. It does, and we also demonstrate that if you deplete the enzyme, mm -hmm. if you target it, and you replace it with a catalytic inactivation, you don't get the events. So it does require catalytic activity. And the other important part, as another way to think of therapeutics, is that it has these modules, and they read chromatin, so they tell it where to go. Right. If you delete a portion of those chromatin binding domains, the things that direct it to the you know, that microenvironment, it can't do it either. So you may not need to necessarily inhibit the enzyme. Right. You could inhibit what brings it to the chromatin. Got it. So now you've opened up your possibilities for targeting. Multiple, in multiple, in, in multiple ways of yes. targeting this protein. So, class, so yeah. someday we may actually not just be targeting, let's say, MET amplification or right. HER2 amplification. We'll be targeting not only the amplified protein, but we can target something downstream. That helps that. propagate it. That's the whole, so if you, going back, you know, years ago when Shemke identified DHRPAR amplifications, right? Yeah. The whole idea is that you get this amplification and no one knows what drives these events. Right. Why do you get selection of DHFR? Why do you get selection of 1Q21 region right. in ovarian cancer? One possibility is there are enzymes that sit above them right. that receive in a signal or selective pressure. They cause these events to occur in pathology. Now the question is, are there physiological signals that would cause this developmentally that maybe go awry in cancer? Got it. So in developing fetuses, it's frequently known that in the brain there's a lot of copy alterations. And no one really understands what propagates those or regulates those. Um, it's seen in all developmental organisms. So the question then becomes, is this actually naturally occurring? And there's something happens, such as amplification of this enzyme. So this enzyme is amplified in 19% of the approximately 2,000 tumors we looked at. That amplification correlates with increased expression by comparing with RNA-seq. Mm -hmm. We could not have done any of this without Gaddy Getz. Gaddy's um, a good friend and an incredible colleague. Um, we found that there's a big percentage of tumors with gain. If we use classic definitions of gain, right, huge folds like MEC, you wouldn't look at this protein or this gene because it's only around two, three fold. Its increased expression never exceeds fourfold. If it does, it kills the cell. Right. At least in our hands. So what this says is you, you now have this these things that are close to the grass or noise based on genomics. Right? So you may have they may not become obvious in how they kind of regulate this. Right. Um, the thing that's really interesting and getting back to the question of like, do you cause specific regions and you know, are there things that come in? What tells us this may be true is if we, when we looked at our tumor data sets for amplification. So with Gaddy's uh, group, what we did is we get asked if the demethylase is copy gained, which other regions of the genome by cytogenetic analysis are gained equally. We found the region we identified in cells. Right. We found new regions which we could then go show in any transgenic model we've ever tested. But we also found that in ovarian cancer, certain regions would go away and certain regions would become stronger. And so now if you look at those regions, like regions on the X chromosome, right. they're gained in any cell type too. So this may mean that certain cells or tissue types, their chromatin state 
may inadvertently make certain regions selected for more or less than others. Wow. And then also along that same line, if you look at tumors, 19% of tumors have a gain. Right. If you look at eight tumor types, uh, 1,770 samples. If you just pull out ovarian and ask focal amplification relationships to the demethylase, 46% of those cases have focal gain and increased expression. They have no deletion. So it means that certain cancer types will be selecting for this. So you add a couple layers. You have a chromatin state configuration within the nucleus. So right. a skin cell is not going to look like that of a liver cell or a colon or lung. Right. So you have that one layer that's on there. Then you have the levels of these enzymes or selective input pressures that modulate them. So you may be selecting for these regions. So this could explain, for example, and this is my pet idea, is that this may be why you get some tumor, uh, tumor heterogeneity for the amount of amplifications or why, even when you look at a tumor, why there's actually selection of certain copy numbers. And could it even, could it even could, is that chromatin state uh, affected by the site of metastasis even? It could be. You would imagine then that input signal. So, for example, if you were to shift it to where now it goes from a, a place where there's a different type of nutrient exposure, different type of oxygenation, different type of developmental cue, Got it. you may trigger that you had your original copy events being altered, but now you add another layer on top of it. 